1936 and 1937, thousands traveled to Spain to fight against Franco with the international brigades. Once again, the vast majority were young working class men, though not all. Penny Fuel was a nurse working in Hertfordshire. A colleague asked her if she would volunteer for Spain. I said I knew nothing about Spain. I didn't know anything. She said I wanted educating, so she told me all about Spain, how the nuns were taking Franco's side, and of course it grabbed my heart. I was young and very emotional. Penny soon found herself in a field hospital on the front line, treating terrible injuries and teaching Spanish nurses to do the same. When bombs first fell near her operating theater, it was invaded by civilians desperate for shelter. One man collided with her in the dark, and as she pushed him away, her fingers became sticky. When the lights were back on, she saw that half the flesh on the man's face had been blown away. Long before Hermann Goering launched the Luftwaffe's raids against London in September 1940, Penny Fuel was experiencing the brutality of area bombing. The Spanish Civil War, as illustrated by Pablo Picasso, was teaching the world to dread the bomber. Months later, Penny was badly wounded during a raid. Waking up in a barn, naked except for bandages wound tightly around her chest and abdomen, she was in terrible pain, and as she lay recovering in hospital, the raids continued. These were nightmare days, she says. The war was ultimately won by Franco's nationalists, with help from the Germans. This was a clear violation of a non-intervention agreement signed by Germany, and a warning of the dangers of trusting Hitler. But just as Britain's leaders were tentative in their handling of the economy, so they were tentative in their handling of the Fuhrer. This was understandable. Britain had won the First World War, but her economy had been badly damaged. As of 2017, astonishingly, the country still owed a large amount of First World War bond debt. The greatest loss, however, was human. Much of Britain's young male generation had been killed, wounded, or traumatized, and the nation's leaders were desperate to consign the war to history. They wanted to believe in a new peaceful world order based on the League of Nations, and were reluctant to focus too closely on events in Germany. Equally, they did not want to impose the high taxes that would be needed to rearm. Overall, therefore, it was easier for collective heads to remain in the sand where they could ignore the war cries of men such as Winston Churchill. And although Britain's politicians disapproved of Hitler's methods, they did not initially identify him as an existential threat. As future United States President John F. Kennedy explained in his 1940 book, Why England Slept, it is only fear, violent fear for one's own security, that results in a nationwide demand for armaments. Such fear did not exist in Britain until it was almost too late. <laughs>